Star Wars. It was once the biggest franchise on the planet, but today it barely registers in the cultural mindsets of our youth and upcoming generations. Today we're going to examine how it is that Disney may look to rejuvenate, to revive, and to bring forth a renaissance of Star Wars so that it continues to be the giant franchise, the evergreen juggernaut that it once was. And remember, Robert Iger does not admit defeat easily. He'll even return to the CEO chair if it takes it. This is a man all about legacy. And with Star Wars, his legacy is greatly tarnished. How are they going to fix it? We have some allegations which cannot be verified, but which I think, based on my track record, you will greatly enjoy. Sit back. This will grow and grow as the video goes on. Watch the entire thing. Thank you for being here. Let's get straight into it. Hello and how are you everybody? It is such a fantastic day today. It's a beautiful Sunday. I am joined by quite the roster of individuals and there may be a little buzz about what it is we're going to talk about today and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that this is going to be quite the discussion. Joining us, we've got Nick from Echo Base Network. We have Lorne from That Park Place, and we have Coach also from Echo Base Network. Gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having us on. Thanks for Pleasure having to us. Be here. We are yep. tickled to be here. Yep, and an august company. All <laughs> right, now we are going to dive into something that is not Star Wars related for just a minute. Everybody, listen up. Everybody in the audience, we this is going to be... This is going to be a big time conversation and it's going to get more and more the farther we go into it. You're going to watch, want to watch every single bit of this. However, what I want to start off with is that Disney did a little uh, news dump on Friday evening, right? They put it out there at the dead hours when nobody's paying attention and it tells you something when they do this. But I'm just wanting to bring to everybody's attention this, this post by Disney Parks talking about Tiana's Bayou Adventure replacing Splash Mountain. Because if we click on it, it turns out that Disney is doing everything, literally everything that I said that they were doing with this ride that people could not believe they would be this dumb, that they could possibly do this. They're doing every bit of it. And I have been reporting on this for about a year now, even back to some of the first times I made an appearance with Valiant Renegade and we laughed out loud together live on the, the show about the idea of Disney putting this thing in uh, themed around a salt dome on Avery Island. Well, guess what? Here it comes. And uh, it is, uh, well, it's just some kind of special. And so it's not only that Tiana, they're not going to base it on the movie. They're going to base it on something, you know, some new story they've made up. It's not just that they are getting rid of the soundtrack from the movie and coming up with their own stuff, but it's also... Uh, based around Tiana owning a salt mine, and it is literally a socialist com uh, commune. So there you go. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And I've been on this for a year, telling exactly what was going to happen, and nobody could believe it because it was so bad. And I guess I shared that because we're going to talk about something today that we have to label rumor. And we have, to, we have to label this speculation. And I just want you to remember as we go through this today, what happened with Splash Mountain. One year of doing the same thing and every single bit of it came true. Now, let's get into Star Wars. Gentlemen, are you ready? Let's do it. Rock and roll. <laughs> Back in December, Daisy Ridley shared a couple of interesting images on her Instagram via a pair of stories. Uh, the first of these revealed that she recently stopped by Lucasfilm in San Fran, California. She shared a picture of the interior of their offices showcasing part of a painting from The Empire Strikes Back alongside a statue of Yoda. Okay, so Daisy Ridley was at Lucasfilm. Interesting, interesting. Good, good Star Wars had, stuff Had there. lunch, yep, I believe. Yep, yep, <laughs> absolutely. And then we also had some 
information about the uh, supposed next movie that it was going to be set somewhere around the sequel trilogy. And uh, I know that not, not everybody is a fan of Daniel RPK, but this was part of some of that buzz going on around uh, sort of the Star Wars community. And then the Hollywood Reporter. Let me get the name on this one. This is uh, Daisy Ridley talks her indie. Sometimes I think about dying, producing, and her Star Wars future by Brian Davids. And if we take a look to see what it is that Daisy Ridley had to say about, well, let's say Lucasfilm's big ideas coming up. Here's the question she received, and here's how she responded. It took 32 years to revisit Han, Luke, and Leia, and so much story was missed during that time. Boy, you're not kidding. And probably stuff that we didn't want to see now that we know who's in charge of it. So my one hope for Rey is that we reunite with her at least once every decade and track her development over time. Is that more appealing to you than waiting 30 years and playing catch up on all the time missed? Can you say somebody's handed a question, ladies and gentlemen? All right, let's get to the <laughs> answer. Honestly, I have no idea. Remember, this is coming on the heels of her having been at Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. I feel like Ray's story ended in a wonderful way with the last film. <laughs> yeah. Anybody here think that? Anybody like that ending? Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It's, it's already been an insane three years since that film came out. I feel like quite a different person. We've all gone through a massive change in the last three years with lots of crazy things happening. So I really don't know if there are plans. I just don't know. But ultimately, I loved my experience, I loved what I got to do, and I loved the people I got to work with. So should that happen again, even once, amazing. Because the dream is to really be around nice people that make you feel good and feel heard while you do good work. There are a couple of tells in this statement that indicate something's going on. Although I give Daisy Ridley tons of credit, and by the way, for anybody watching this video, separate the person from the role. Yeah, We all like Daisy Ridley, probably a wonderfully nice person. Mm -hmm. Ray, the character, poorly written, but she's given the lines that she's given. Okay? Yeah. That said, here are the tells where we get some information. Although she's presenting uh, that she doesn't know anything, here's what we get. First of all, she says, should that happen again even once? Amazing. Why would you say even once in that if you just, I don't know. But then also, who are these really nice people that make you feel good and feel heard? Who are these people? Because J.J. Abrams is not going to come back to do this. None of the people associated with J.J. Abrams are probably going to come back to do this. So who are these really nice people? Gentlemen, any guesses on who these wonderful, nice people are? No, no clue. I would guess that it's whoever she thinks she's going to be working with specifically. Probably so. All right. Now, here's what we're going to get into. And this is really, okay, so all of that is out there. That's all out in the press. People know about it. We all know she visited Lucasfilm in December. We also know that Robert Iger took over Disney around what time? Was it uh, December? A month around ago. the same time frame, right? On my yeah. birthday. Yeah. And what is your birthday, Lauren? November 18th. Okay. How about that? Iger takes over, and very soon thereafter, Ridley's coming in to Lucasfilm. Mm. What else is going on right now is that the Galactic Star Cruiser can't fill its rooms, can it? Mm -mm. They're having to cancel the excursions, the, the landlocked, non-moving excursions of the Galactic Star Cruiser at Disney's Hollywood Studios. They're having to cancel that thing in the summer the hottest time, not just in terms of temperature, but also in terms of attendance. They're having to cancel it. Who is the main draw for the Galactic Star Cruiser? The character of Rey. Who also is the main character over at uh, Galaxy's Edge in both Disneyland and Disney World? Rey again. And here comes Dis uh, Daisy Ridley into Lucasfilm right after Iger takes over. Interesting. What is more interesting, perhaps, is that I have two sources, and I cannot verify the information that they have provided. I can tell you that one of these sources is the same source that I and Valiant Renegade have discussed in the past. We are not going to give away either of the identities, and I'm going to be very careful. However, there is a track record established. But again, this is rumor and speculation, and I cannot 
verify independently any of this. Let's get into everything that I have been told. I'm going to go line by line with these things about the future of Star Wars. Nick, Coach, Lorne, you are all going to be given just an open floor after I introduce each item and mm -hmm. share your thoughts freely. And free, free conversation, free discussion, we're just going to have at it. As Star Wars fans, taking this in, taking in a bit of fun, right? A bit of speculation. Here we go. I'm nervous at what's about. Coming. I'm terrified. First of all, <laughs> I, am, I am told that there was a decision point uh, in the last few months concerning Star Wars. And that that decision point came about because the brand is seen as damaged even internally at Disney. That's due to declining viewership for Disney Plus. It's due to declining interest in the parks. And that's particularly uh, destructive for Disney on two fronts. First of all, Star Wars was supposed to be an evergreen property, an evergreen franchise that has its own marquee spot on Disney Plus. And second of all, it has some of the most premium real estate in any of the Disney parks, both, both on the West Coast and on the East Coast. Star Wars cannot fail for Disney. And the decision point is that Star Wars is failing. And so it is my understanding, although I cannot verify it, it is my understanding that the top level leadership, you make of that what you will, that the top level leadership of Lucasfilm was brought with the top level leadership of Disney to make a decision as to what they're going to do in the future to reconcile this problem they have. They had some options. I'm told that some of those options included retconning the sequel trilogy, as well as continuing the uh, story, the narrative around what they've done so far. And here's what I am told has been decided. I'm told that Disney is going to bring back Ray. So let's start there and let's just dive in. Gentlemen, this is probably the easiest oh. guess that you could have had so far because Ridley was at Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. Now she's being asked questions about coming back as Ray. She's being very diplomatic, saying she doesn't know the plans. Notice she didn't say, no, I don't know anything about it. I'm not coming back. No, they haven't reached out to me. She didn't say any of those things. She's pulling sort of one of those uh, Star Trek con moments. Everybody know about that? Oh. And she's saying, oh, I don't, I don't know of the plans. Well, that's not the same as saying, no, it's not happening. So, gentlemen, let's start there. Ray coming back. Can Disney do that in a way that would redeem the character, or is it too late? Take it away, whoever wants. Mm. So I'll just, off the top of my head, just from hearing this, uh, those movies disgust me so much, and I hate them <laughs> so much, that even seeing her character come back in any way, shape, or form disgusts me. But uh, again, not talking about Daisy Ridley herself. Yeah, We're talking yeah, not about talking character. about Daisy Ridley. Right. She's a wonderful, Ray lovely the, person. Ray the character. I, and, and anybody that's watched Echo Base Network for a long period of time knows we have no issues with the actors that portrayed any of the characters in the sequel trilogy. Um, could, could it be fixed? Maybe. But for me personally, I don't really care about her being fixed. I don't want anything to do with Ray or anybody from, from the sequel era at all. Um, and, and that's just, that's kind of my own personal stance. All right, uh, coach bringing you in and let me tell the audience too, we're, this is not even close to as spicy as it's going to get this, that we're going to build every single step of the way coach. Based on how would you, said, how would you bring Ray in, in a way that would work? Well, hang on a second. I, I want to okay, respond to the first it, question. <laughs> what do you got? It's a it's it's a continuing decline of Star Wars because it takes it takes us back to the bad moments of the sequel trilogy. The sequel trilogy overall was a failure. I am an educator and I'm around teenagers all year long. All year, I have taught thousands of kids in my career. None of them talk about Star Wars today. None. Right. We, we've identified on on multiple 
domains, that it is no longer a cultural phenomenon. It is not. So the continuation of this story, it's horrible. Um, it's, a, it's a bad idea. To answer your question, how would I bring Ray in? Right. If they, if they called you and said, here's, here's uh, $100,000, figure it out. Help us out. We, we've mm -hmm. got to fix it. <laughs> I, I right, $200,000, coach. $200,000. <sighs> So you're talking, I mean, if we're talking about something that happens after the sequel trilogy, after episode nine you and Ray's coming yes. in, I just don't, I just don't see how you, how you fix it. I, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> that, that would be my answer. I, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I can't see. You'd anything. say you're off your rocker. You can keep your 200,000. Well, no, I'd come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> well, some listen, somebody in Hollywood is probably feeling the same way that you are right now. Looking at it and say, well, I, I can't believe you're going to do it, but. All right, I'll take the money. All right, Lauren, first thoughts on Ray potentially coming back? Well, I, I think there's two things. It's the, the, you kind of presuppose two questions with this. Could it be done, and could it be told in a story that would at least be thematically appropriate? I think there's two ways that you could do that. One is that you could set up a story that is like in an Elseworlds kind of context where it's not really considered part of official canon, but it's a Star Wars story. The other is that you set it up to actually retcon the sequel trilogy and make all of that go away. So it's a stepping stone as kind of an apology to reset the universe so that we get back to the end of Return of the Jedi. Are they going to do that? Probably not. Other than that, no, this does not improve the fortunes of Star Wars at all. All right, let's go into the next point. Everybody excited for the next one? Uh, right. I hope it's, You're gonna I hope love it's it. better than the last one. <laughs> All right, here we go. I am told, although I cannot verify, and this is speculation, that this was a financial decision on the part of Disney. Hear me out. Disney has invested greatly into the sequel trilogy long term. We're talking about all the money that was put into merchandise, we're talking about all the money that was put into the theme parks. We're talking about all the money that was put into a hotel. And it is going to cost a lot of money to retcon that stuff, to revert that stuff and refurbish it and move it into any other era. And I'm told that at this decision point, that all of this was laid out, that costs were looked at. How much would it cost to move these various assets into some new era, some new story? What is it going to cost to go back and to change the sequel trilogy or to even get rid of it, to, to just jump ship and leave? What, what are the costs? This was a financial decision. And so this contact, this source tells me that the reason that they are going to potentially bring Ray back is to test it out. Put out a big merchandising push with a theatrical release to go along with it. And find out, can Ray reinvigorate Star Wars with a number of other characters around her that we will discuss in just a moment? All right. So, any thoughts? We'll start with Lauren this time. Lauren, you went last. But any thoughts on this being a financial decision decided at the corporate level by a bunch of business people in Iger looking at what's going to cost them more? What say you? Was this the right call to do one single second attempt to bring back the sequel trilogy characters? No. I think if you want to test the waters there, you've already got Disney Plus there for that. You measure your engagement there. You keep your costs down. You don't waste the prestige of a theatrical release, plus all the associated merchandising. You put out the TV show. You wait to see what the reaction is. If people are favorable, then you put out the merchandise. Don't waste your money and even more of your prestige on something that is so divisive. Okay. Coach, what do you think? I feel like it makes business sense what they're doing as far as Disney's concerned, because we have said it for, for years now, they have a severe disconnect with the fandom. They, they're putting all their hope in this character. It makes sense. 
It makes sense. Bring Ray back, get the kids excited about her, put good ki- characters around her, come out with a movie or whatever it is, and then maybe people will go to the hotel. Maybe more people will go to the parks. Maybe more people will buy the toys or whatever it is. So it, it totally makes sense. However, the disconnect between that story, all of that with those characters and the fandom is so wide, it's going to fail. I can tell you now. Nick? So, yeah, I'm I'm on the same page as Coach there. And, and we've said it for so long. The, the, the disconnect between the, the corporate bean counters over at Lucasfilm and Disney in the fan base, like the hardcore fan base that spends their money on the merchandise, goes and... S- Rewatches the sh- shows in the episodes of shows multiple times, goes to see movies multiple times, tells their friends, tells their family about it. They're not interested in the sequel trilogy era characters and stuff. Now, granted, of course, there's a fan base for that out there. There are people that love Ray in the sequels and all that, but that fan base is insignificant to the larger fan base that grew up with star Wars from 1977 through 2000, 2000, what was it? Five. Five. Um, you know, with the, with the OT in, in the, uh, in the uh, prequels. So uh, yeah, like coach said, from a business standpoint, I understand that they're like, we've put all our money into this. Uh, you know, how can we fix it at this point in time? And because of the disconnect, they don't understand it can't be fixed. They can fix it. Dave Filoni's provided the way to fix it with the world between worlds, retcon it, or or have it in its own separate time frame and and do small spin-off stuff for the small amount of people. Don't put a lot of money into it and then focus more on the unknown future of the OT characters. Get them all back on screen together like everybody wanted to see in the sequels. That will bring droves and droves of fans back. But the thing is, they don't get it. They don't understand it. And uh, if they're going this route and going to be testing the waters, they'll get their answer pretty quick. Well, you know, there's there are egos involved, I would say. I oh, think yeah. that's part of what is playing into this. Yeah. All right, let's 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 increase the spice levels right now. Here's what else I'm told. And this this I was actually told about six months ago, and it's resurfaced now. Uh, We never actually talked about this, although uh, Valiant Renegade may have seen some of this information when we were sharing this back and forth from a from a trusted source that we have who has been right. I mean, just universally. But again, I can't verify it. However. About a year ago, it seems based on what I'm told that there was an order put out to various consulting firms various research firms to look into popularity among characters for Star Wars. And they were looking at recognition, popularity, favorability, going to do uh, sample sizes with large groups of people to figure out which characters still resonated should they move forward. And this gets into what is being told to me is a new galactic pillar system the Galaxy Pillars, which will be the big characters going forward, which Disney hopes to unite the fan base by putting these characters together and having them uh, be part of a unified story that they're going to attempt to bring Ray back to get the sequel trilogy fans, should there be any, and some other characters. But the first thing that popped out was that I received information from this source saying that in testing with with, uh, random people, huge numbers of people, consulting firms brought in for this, that R2-D2 was far and away more popular than BB-8. It did not matter if people had seen the droids before. It didn't matter if they had never heard of Star Wars whatsoever. And so in this next push, What I'm being told is you can expect for BB-8 to be what's referred to as a tier two character in the story and R2-D2 will be up front as a main character and that's coming off of this testing that they've done with audiences to see 
you know, sort of engineer this story uh, from the from the fans up, trying to determine it that way. Any excitement about seeing R two D two back with Ray, gentlemen? And then we're going to get into the other characters. Uh, it makes sense uh, that R two is, of course, better than BB eight. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody would dispute that. But again, having R two with Ray, um. Remind I, me, where is R2 at the end of the, the sequel trilogy? Uh, at the end of the sequel? God, I only saw that movie once. Uh, is he even oh, with Ray? Lauren, do you know the answer to that? I don't think he was with her on the when she this went how back bad to the sequel trilogy is. We can't remember even what happened to the characters that we <laughs> were supposed to be important. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the last we see him, he was in the celebration on whatever planet it was that they were at. But yeah, I don't think... R2 is with Ray back on Tatooine. All right. Well, well, somehow I'm told that's going to happen again. Coach, thoughts? Yeah. It's, it sounds like they're trying to listen to the fans, right? They're trying to bring back the legacy characters that fans love. Yeah, but my excitement for that is uh, minuscule. I actually, <laughs> just, I actually just looked up screen time for the sequel trilogy top 10 characters are two's not even in it but coach coach they sent out all of these high paid firms to go test this out and they figured out that the sequel trilogy was no good because it didn't have enough r2 in it they're or trying to is, fix it coach this is part of the same for you so this is so, part of the problem that got them there in the first place is that part of the issue with disney is that they're a corporate entity they don't understand why star wars is popular or what is the secret sauce that makes it work mm. so the best that they can do is try and dissect it to figure out what parts is it made out of and what do people react to and what you get from that is telling a story by committee that's never going to work the only way this is going to work is if you have a visionary who loves the universe knows what makes it tick instinctually and tells a story that's personal to them yeah, and and I and don't get it wrong, everybody. I love R two. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. But to put him in, you know, that's like having a, a nice T bone surrounded by crap. That's how I see it. So the excitement is zero, and it's very confusing for the fans that enjoyed the sequel trilogy. Now you're going to go watch episode ten or whatever this is going to be, and there's Ray. Where the crap's BB-8? Why is he with R2? What you're just pandering to the old people now. Like it, the it, all this garbage is just going to continue with this, and it really shows the disconnect, corporate mindset, with for sure. All right, so let's talk about these galactic pillars, these characters that they believe for the next big push to to bring back Star Wars, to reinvigorate the franchise, and get everybody excited again. Let's talk about who those characters are. There are five of them. Here we go. Ray is the character who leads it all. She's the one that they want to pin this on and try to revive it. If it doesn't work, they're willing to go back and scrap. But Ray is Ray is there. Chewbacca is back. I am told Chewbacca is in this. R two D two. Number three is what I am told. Number four is a brand new character that we can discuss a little bit more in a moment. Although please note that, you know, one of the things you have to do when you're, when you're receiving this sort of information is that you have to remember all of this can change because we're in pre-product. So, you know, it hasn't come to fruition yet. We don't know who's going to be in charge, all that sort of thing, but a new character. Before I reveal the fifth character, let me say this. Part of the way that this information has come to me is because Disney has to reach out when they're doing these plans. They have to reach out two, three years ahead to let their partners know what's coming and work with them to develop a plan to make this franchise as successful as possible. The fifth character who will be... Can I... Uh, can I go ahead. <laughs> Can I guess? <laughs> no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The fifth character who will be joining this uh, troupe for a movie post-sequel trilogy? Is 
is Grogu. I knew it. Baby Yoda. <laughs> I knew it. I, I was going to suggest Rose Tico so they could offload some of the old figures. But <laughs> Lord, I, we can't yeah. have people. We can't have people leave the video that fast. We can't announce that Rose is back. No, no, Rose is not. I have heard nothing about Rose. But yes, this is the grand plan that I have been told is in the works. Again, I can't verify it. It's speculation. It's coming from sources I really, really trust. But the idea is that somehow Grogu is going to unite with Ray in the next movie. If they can work out all the contracts, if they can get Daisy Ridley back, that Grogu will be a part of it along with R2, Chewie, and a brand new character. All right. First of all, Lorne, I need you to explain to me, uh, Grogu, how long will that put him uh, having disappeared through the sequel trilogy? How old will he be and will he look any different? Because I think, although now this part is truly just me thinking out loud, I think that aging Grogu helps them because then they can sell new Grogu toys because he won't look the same as the Grogu in The Mandalorian. Lorne, tell okay, us about so this. So I agree. And this was the part that I, I knew about a little bit ahead of time. And so I put a lot of thought into this. I apologize if I ramble for a bit. So I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. At this time, he would be at least 75 years old. If you assume that he ages linearly just like a human being does, I mean, obviously over a greater time scale, that would mean that right now Grogu in the Mandalorian time frame is about five years old at the time of this projected future, he'd be about seven and a half years old. But let's put that away for a minute and, and pretend that, that maybe he ages a little differently and we'll, we'll get a little bit higher. The logical place to take Grogu uh, is, I think the title of The Mandalorian refers to him. And the way that I always pictured the series ending is there would be a flash forward into the future. You would see Grogu recounting the stories of his father at Din Djarin's funeral as the last, as the, the Mandalore who just passed. And then Grogu could potentially take up and lead from there. There's an interesting thing that I got to looking at when I was looking at time scales over time here. One of the interesting things that we used to talk about with Baby Yoda was that he was born in the same year that Anakin Skywalker was. There's also the birth date, the exact day of births for Luke, Leia, and Ezra was all on the same day. Um, there's you might, for the casuals, you might have to explain who Ezra is. Ah, Ezra from uh, uh, the Rebels TV show, who right now is missing in the unknown regions, supposedly in the orbit of Thrawn. Um, but there's a duality that's present in Star Wars always. There's a yin and the yang. This comes from Taoism. It's what a lot of what Lucas based things on. If I was thinking about where a Kathleen Kennedy led Star Wars was coming from, it would be that you have these two super high powered characters. One is Grogu, one is Rey. In the old EU, one of the things that was talked about was the virgin birth of Anakin, and that came from experiments that were being conducted by Darth Plagueis while trying to create life. Ray, in a way, is also a side effect of those type of experiments for Palpatine while trying to create a clone that could house his body. Whatever enemy that you have in this kind of a timeline would be looking for entities of that kind of power. And thinking about how Kathleen Kennedy looks at things, um, if Grogu has been around Mandalorians and he sort of rejected the path of the Jedi, I could see him being a toxic male Jedi that Rey would have to then redeem. They, they from Kathleen's standpoint, might want to set him up as a potential villain. The alternative is that Rey and Grogu team up against whatever villain is hunting them for their unique abilities and, and biological characteristics. Fantastic thoughts. Coach, now it all makes, over there? Now it all makes sense. Really, really it does. And, and as soon as you were going through the list, Pro, I, number five, I knew. Because it, it, it definitely makes business sense. But Chapter 16 Mandalorian happened. Star Wars fandom is on a, on a high it hadn't been on in so long. The fans were united, whatever that means. But the fans were overall generally extremely happy and celebrating that moment. And then the next show comes out, The Book of Boba Fett. And immediately, immediately almost, 
Grogu is not with Luke. We're going to go, we're going to fast forward to Mandalorian chapter 17. Grogu and Mando are back together already. Now it makes sense. Grogu is like the crack pandemic of the 80s. You got to give, <laughs> you got to give more Grogu to the fans, keep them wrapped up around Grogu, and they're really going to be leaning on him in this Greatest next, analogy in, ever. next iteration of the movies. And it makes sense. It really, really does. Could that be an interesting movie? Yes. Will people go watch that? Absolutely. Will it make money? Yeah, it'll make money. Will it be as good as of Star Wars as original fans want it to be? No. It won't be. It won't. It will never be as at what Star Wars could have been. But I don't think it will be. If they pull all that off, my interest won't be very high. But the younger generation. People love Grogu. You throw him in commercials, and and he's with a powerful woman. He could be selling Hyundai's in no time. That's central you know, casting. This, this Star Wars thing doesn't work out. He's, he's yeah. going to be everywhere. So so that uh, that is that is a win for Disney. Maybe Nick, how big how big I don't know, but it it's not necessarily a win for Star Wars for me. Nick, are you ready to see Ray? as a motherly figure for Grogu training him, finishing the training that he was supposed to do with Luke, but ends up doing it with Ray. Are you ready to see her train Grogu in the ways of the force? Luke couldn't do it, but the strong wham and power of Ray could do it. <laughs> oh my She's gonna change God. the little Grogu diapies. Yeah. It, it honestly, it, it does make sense. Like, you know, how can we take this giant turd that we created and make it good? Uh, let's put a bunch of strawberries and sprinkles and ice cream on it, you know? Uh, and that's well, basically. You don't eat down to the core, you'll be all right. Exactly. And, and, and when you get down to the core, it's still Disney Star Wars and it's still crap. This is going to be crap, but this is going to be good for the new generation of fans that they're trying to get they obviously don't care about any of us old farts or anybody that that loved that grew up with with the ot or the prequels uh because you throw grogu in there people are gonna go see it whether ray's in there or not um it's just like oh grogu uh, he, he's grown up now you know and he's got a lightsaber and He's now, you know, doing more Jedi stuff. Like, like people are going to go see it just because he's in it. Then you add Chewbacca and you add R2 into it, which are the only two characters you can add into it because they, you know, are ageless uh, and will live on forever. So you throw them in there uh, to appease some of the OT fan base that actually like the sequels. Um, and you, you, Got on paper, you have a recipe for success. With well, I this. found it interesting they didn't even mention that my source did not even mention C three PO, so apparently yeah. not part of that that big five. Yeah, and uh, you know we asked Anthony Daniels um, when we had a conversation with him in Nashville last year. You know we see R two and stuff everywhere. Where's three PO? And he just looked down at the ground and was like, I don't know. So I, I don't know. He seemed interested in continuing his role uh, as 3PO, um, but it doesn't seem from just his body language and stuff that he's really been getting calls to reprise that role. Um, so, yeah. Well, that uh, jives then with what you're hearing, which I had not heard yeah. that. I had not heard what, what you're saying. So that's brand yeah. new to me, but that, that yeah. lines up then. Yeah. So yeah, I it, it makes sense, but I I have no interest in seeing that. I would have way more interest if they did the world between worlds, retcon the whole thing, and then gave us the original cast from past the Mandalorian, you know, all the way up until you know where the sequel started. Well, you know that that's interesting. You bring that up. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Um, the, the, the other character we haven't talked about this fifth character, I don't have very many details on at all. However, the fifth character I am told is some, is a character that they want to develop through the Disney plus shows either already existing or will exist. I don't know the answer to that, 
but this character is going to come from one of the Disney Plus shows and be the fifth. So any thoughts on who that might be? I mean, legitimately, I've not been told who it is, so I, I can't, you know, I can't say. Ahsoka. No, she's she'd be way too old. Old, uh, old Ben, you got old Ahsoka. Hmm, I hadn't thought of that. But, you know, the, the what I was thinking is it might be like a child that they introduced maybe in season three of The Mandalorian. Could be something like that. And then, Could be somebody from yeah. Skeleton Crew, too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's about. a good point, yeah. yeah. Could be a kid from Skeleton Crew. Who might be somebody that would excite you guys? Might Might get you to think about buying a ticket, even if you don't. Any characters out there in the galaxy that might get you a little bit interested? It could be Broom Boy. <laughs> M- M- Mando? I like Broom Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Broom Boy finally shows up. He's been waiting. He's been cleaning that deck for so long. <laughs> All right, Pal- so let's Palpatine. get to the- Palpatine. Oh well, you know, there's only a billion of those lying around. <laughs> he, he's, um, yeah, he's coming back again. <laughs> all right, so let's hop into the last thing that uh, my source tells me. Um, but basically, Star Wars has been mismanaged, and this is an attempt, let's say, to get it back on track. But this is not the original plan. There was a different plan. It was jettisoned when Gina Carano was let go and Favreau and Filoni had to come up with something new. And then not from that same source, from a different source, I'm told that this new thing they're trying now is an Iger initiative to try to rejuvenate the franchise. But again, this is not the first plan. This is not what they thought they were going to do when the Mandalorian uh, was first put out there when they were first planning out all of these interconnected series, when they were thinking about bringing Thrawn in and assigning a very famous actor with that role. But uh, this is, this is the result. This is what we come to now uh, after Gina Carano was fired. Where do you guys think it was going before she was fired? Where was, where were Favreau and Filoni going with this? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, ultimately, I guess they were going towards the whole Thrawn thing and remnants of the Empire, um, you know, with Thrawn trying to come back and take the galaxy back or whatever. Seemed like the the direction they were going. Uh, you know, there was... You saw all the secret stuff they were doing behind the scenes trying to... You know, they were wanting Grogu for a reason, for his blood. There's obviously some cloning and all that sort of stuff. They were trying to trying to do stuff with that. So I'm sure that was going to play a big part in it. Um, but honestly, as far as the end game, I, I, I have no idea. I, I have no think, idea where they were going. Do you think that they may still put something into Ahsoka that gives them an out in case this uh, this Ray attempt fails? It would be financially smart for them to do that. <laughs> Lauren, what would they need to put in there to make that uh, give themselves an out? The only way you can do it is by leveraging the world between worlds, and I I yeah. think that's probably what their original at least some plans were around. I I do think. Um, one of the interesting things about the Mandoverse is that they were sprinkling in some things that subtly deviated from the sequel trilogy, where there were certain little Easter eggs that could attach to the sequel trilogy, but could also go in a different direction if they were allowed to go that way. And so I I think they were kind of building in some story time where they were maybe trying to wait out the current management uh, in order to push it in the direction they might have actually wanted to go. Some of the rumors that have been coming out lately um, and I think these were sourced to Doomcock. I may be wrong, so if I'm misattributing the source, I apologize. There, there's been rumors about Thrawn and some Night Sister like entities in the unknown regions. If you set up Ezra as a potential villain, there's some interesting things that can be done there. Um, but is this going to work? It, it's all going to depend on the execution. And I think the idea of trying this to see if it works 
and hoping you can build in an escape hatch if it doesn't, the audience has already told you this doesn't work. Nobody's buying the merchandise. It's time to admit that this failed and you need to do something drastic. I, I don't think you can keep trying to cover up the stench on what they produced. All right, final thoughts. We're going to wrap this thing up, but I, I have an interesting question that I want us to end on. If Grogu is now with these characters in a new movie that's post-sequel trilogy, gentlemen, what does that mean for what will be the ending of The Mandalorian and what will be, uh, how will they get Grogu through the sequel trilogy without ever being known? And then suddenly he appears with Ray later on. If this all comes true, and again, you know, what a thing now if in a week, a week's time, we get a news report that says that Daisy Ridley contractual talks with Disney, you know, have fallen through and all this is, is moot. But if they are successful, and it sounds like they're making progress in this direction, they're reaching out to their uh, various partners in all these different industries to work on this. That's what I'm being told. Um, what implications are there for The Mandalorian and for other Disney Plus shows by this information? Whoever wants it, take it. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets stuck in the world between worlds and he just, you know, comes out after the sequel trilogy. So Grogu is like the, the kid from the navigator then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and he just goes forward in time and that Mando's gone, all that's gone, you know, and and Ray senses him or, or something. I could see them maybe doing something like that. Uh, then that way, um, you know, little crew, cute Grogu, you know, is just in a different time frame now, you know? Um, and, and it's explained because he was, he was stuck in the world between worlds, you know, and that's why he was never actually around, you know, during the sequel trilogy. Well, that's always sense. been a hard point Sorry. for them. It's always been hard that, you can tell when they bring Luke into the story in season two that the idea is for him to train Grogu. At the same time, they've got the sequel trilogy, which is this hard stop where yeah. Luke is a loser and he doesn't have Grogu. Yeah. So, Coach, what do you think? Two-thirds of the live-action series that are coming out this year, Skeleton Crew and Ahsoka, both deal with the unknown regions. It makes more sense to me that that's where Grogu would be. They could definitely do the world between worlds. Nick is not wrong. That makes sense as well. But with them putting so much focus and emphasis on the unknown parts of space, that that makes sense to me. With so much happening with Skeleton Crew there and Ahsoka. So uh, that's definitely where he could be. Lord? There's another reason why that could be the case, too. Uh, you mentioned earlier Rangers of the New Republic. Presumably, Rangers range, and I would guess that they would be going out into those unknown regions. When that got scrapped, what we got was Skeleton Crew. And mm -hmm. from what I understand, that's supposed to be kind of a lost in space style show where they end up in a region that they can't get back from, where there's a bunch of kids. If Grogu somehow ends up on that ship, that's one way they could take it. And also, Grogu's pull out of the Mandalorian. Yeah, Star Trek Voyager <laughs> in Star Wars. <laughs> that's right. Grogu, man, he's just everywhere. Mm. All right, gentlemen. Well, this has been fun. Uh, it's been fun to see your faces as we go through this. I apologize. It's sort of like, uh, you know, getting uh, nauseous on a road trip. So I apologize, yeah. you know, knowing ahead of time what I was going to put you through. But uh, let's start with Nick and work our way uh, to Coach and then Lauren. Final thoughts on potentially Ray and Grogu being united in a new movie. Final thoughts from a business standpoint uh, for the from the bean counters, I understand what they're trying to do. They've already invested all this money. Again, like we've said, the disconnect between the vast majority of the fan base and what they're trying to do is there's just complete disconnect there. So good luck for them, you know, in whatever direction they decide to take this in. But uh, if it's, if it's sequel involved, it's probably going to be a failure, but if you throw Grogu in there, man, I, I don't know, man, it's, it, it's hard to tell, um, what the general audience of star Wars fans are, 
going to flock to. And that seems like something that they would flock to. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I hope it does happen. uh, Coach, if Ray adopts Grogu, does that make Grogu Grogu Skywalker? Hey, it's Star Wars. You could be whoever you want to be these days. That's right. <laughs> By the way, I love the thumbnail that you guys did the other day. We won't talk about it on this show, but there's a thumbnail that uh, about Yoda. It's something. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's good. Thanks. All right, Coach, tell us your thoughts. <laughs> tell us your thoughts. Um. It already sounds better than the sequel trilogy. Well, that, that's true. And if they keep J.J. Abrams away for, from it, and Less Ryan, Johnson, Ryan Johnson away from it. Less forehead. Lucasfilm Story Group away from it. It could, <laughs> it could be better than the sequels. Will it be as good as the Star Wars we would like to have? I, I'm very, very doubtful of that. Um, it's not ever. We're never going to get the original trilogy back. We're never going to get the prequel trilogy back. Uh, but could it be better? Absolutely. Is it going to be something that could save the parks and save the hotel and all that? I am very skeptical on that. Uh, but as a, as somebody who loves Star Wars, I would love to see them fix it. I would love to see it be better. I would love to see it be healthy. So, and I would love it. I would love it to be something that I could get behind and appreciate. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. And that's sad. Heard that. All right, Lauren, uh, the final word is yours on this. Tell us though, any thoughts on sort of an audience growing up with Grogu? They're going from Disney plus and despite it taking him uh, a lot longer to age up chronologically in our, in our world, if this happens, you know, the, the kids who grew with Grogu will turn into a uh, little uh, prepubescents and teenagers while he does with Ray. Well, another part of the problem that they have with this idea is it, it runs into the same problem that you had with the original sequel trilogy is you have this massive gap of time between one story and the next. If you put Grogu into this, it robs any forward momentum that he could have in the Mandalorian or something else, because you already know that he's there 30 years in the future doing stuff and, and nothing of any real import happened. In poker, you've got to know when to fold. They keep throwing good money after bad. It's time to take the loss, fold, lick your wounds, admit you made a mistake, and get back to basics. I think it's safe to say that Kathleen Kennedy is not listening to Kenny Rogers. Let's just, let's just all put that out there. But uh, gentlemen, what an honor to have all of you on. Uh, fantastic discussion. It's not the discussion I think that you all necessarily wanted to have. We'd all love to say, well, they're retconning the whole sequel trilogy and, and we're going back to uh, Luke and we're going back to Han and they're all cool again. We're going back to Leia and she's the uh, princess warrior we always had. But uh, this is Disney's next Hail Mary attempt, allegedly. Let's put the disclaimer out there one more time. This is not finished product. This is something in early, early development. And these rumors are coming out of uh, potentially partners who are working with Disney or with Disney's subsidiaries and relaying information to me. So keep all of this with a grain of salt. But it's been a fantastic time. If you enjoy content like this, please like the uh, video, share it out, subscribe if you have not yet already. And if you're watching this video in the first few hours, just know that we're about to discuss this more in depth along with all kinds of more zany information about the Walt Disney Company and their crazy week coming up over on Renegade Online. Check out the Valiant Renegade channel for that live show where we'll be chatting it up. Link is in the description. All right, may the force be with all of you. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. We'll catch you next time. See you guys. See you on the Sunday live show.